Superlab IOD 401 Flight Data from a complex data presentation. We're going to be going through the Skillsheet IOD 401 after you watch this video. We'll be able to take this Skillsheet quiz and master it right away. We're going to get started today by reading through the background information. Do I have a volunteer to read the background information? Take it in. IOD 401 in its field which requires you to be able to find and use specific data from a large field of set of data. Graphs and tables on the ATC have often seem to be very complicated, but they really are not. All you need to do is carefully examine what we are trying to tell you. Spending a few seconds examining the variables in this class will be well worth your while. You can then just trace your fingers along a variable line up or down the lower column to determine the answer to your question. Excellent. So especially on huge tables like this one, it is worth the while to actually put your finger on the data table and move with it. It's very easy to lose track of which column you're working on, which in a table with this much data could cause pretty bad results for you. We're now going to take a look at an example passage. Uh, the example passage below, uh, we're going to examine the example passage below and then look at the sample IOD 401 style question. As we read through this passage, what we're going to do is circle any words that we are unfamiliar with or confused about so we make sure there's no vocabulary issues that are going to come away. Uh, can we have a volunteer to read the um, to read the passage for us. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, as our volunteer is reading the passage for us, just look for any words that are tricky and we're going to circle them and come back to them. The logic uses huge computer simulations to model population groups. The symbol N O indicates the population's initial size and N T indicates the population size of time T. T is the number of generations following N O. N T is determined by the relationship between birth rate T of the population, the number of individuals born per generation per 1,000 individuals, and the death rate D of the population, the number of individuals that die per generation per 1,000 individuals. Table 1 shows the result of both superior simulations as per population rate. Excellent. So pause for a second and skim through. Are there any words that we want to go through and clarify that we've never seen before? Ecologist. Great. Other ones? Simulation. Any other ones? I'm going to circle this word initial because it actually comes up confused for a lot of confusion typically with students. Any other ones? All right, so let's take a look at these three words then to make sure we know what we're talking about. Ecologists. Anyone know what ecologists study? Yeah, essentially they study ecosystems. In this case, the part of the ecosystem they're studying is how many organisms are born and how many organisms die. All right, so they're just scientists, which is the other part of the end, study ecosystems, ecology. All right, computer simulation. Uh, yeah, what's a computer simulation? Yeah, so essentially instead of going out in the field and spending six months or in this case thousands of years if we look at these generations of having to watch and count and watch and count and watch and count, we know what they've done in the past so we're able to create a program where you could just kind of put in if this variable was true and this variable was true, what would happen in the end. So it essentially saves us years and years and years worth of research by just predicting what would happen using a computer. And the last word, this word initial, what does the word initial mean? Does it mean like the original? Yeah, the original word, we get it. It's a great descriptive term for it. All right, so let's flip to the passage. What we're expecting to find here is a couple of things. Like we're expecting to find the variable NT. We're expecting to find the variable NO. All right, we're also expecting to find the variable B and the variable D. So if we take a look at the table, we see all of those things listed on the side. The last one that we uh, are looking for is the, is the variable x. All right, so taking a look through the table, what do each of these mean? What is x? x is the what? Good, so it's which simulation we're looking at. And it's really, this is just kind of random. There's no real order to which simulation they did in any particular order. It's just which one they ran. And you can tell that based on the following down here. Uh, so the 12 computer simulations that we're going to have uh, What about NO? What does that stand for? Uh, populations. It's a uh, population's initial size. Good. And so what do we mean by this term 
initial size. What is initial size be? The original size. Yes, the original size before they started the experiment. So how many organisms did you start? All right. Now if we look at B as our next one, what does our B variable stand for in this case? Good. What is the birth rate? Perfect. All right. And how many new organisms are born per every 1,000 per generation? All right. So it's kind of a long descriptor for it. But we have to think about, so like if the birth rate was 1, that would mean that every generation, for every 1,000 individuals, one new one would be born. All right. What about D, the death rate? Uh, it's the death rate. Um, it means the number of individuals that die per generation per 1,000 individuals. Okay. All right. The number of organisms which die per generation per 1,000 individuals. All right. So now as we start to take a look at birth rates and death rates, uh, birth rates are going to cause our initial, our initial population to do what? Go up. Yeah, to go up. So the more births that happen as generations go on, you're going to have a population go up. Whereas death rates are going to cause our population to do what? Yeah, to decrease. So what we're looking at is essentially the balance between our birth rates and our death rates to see what happens to the population. All right, we can even predict what would happen if our birth rate was higher than our death rate. Would the population go up or go down? Yeah, it would increase. There's more births than death. What if the birth rate was less than the death rate? What would happen to the population? Yeah, it would decrease because there's more things dying than being born. And what if they were the same? What would happen to the population? Well, it remain the same. Yeah, it'd stay exactly the same. Just as many things that are being born are dying. All right? And you can see those play out in a couple of different ways. So, like, in this first one, the birth rate is 0.5, but the death rate is 0.25. So you see the population is actually going up every time, only by a little bit, all right, but it's going up. Whereas if you look at an example like simulation three, the birth rate and the death rate are the same. So the number of organisms in each generation doesn't change. Whereas if you look at a simulation like number eight, where the death rate is bigger than the birth rate, you actually see, so in this case, it's starting with a million, and it continues to go down because there's more depth. All right, so just as a quick review, all right, what was the, oh, one last part we didn't talk about was all these ends with the number next to What does that mean, N with a little number next to So, like, what does N2 mean? Yeah, so which one of this, what does this mean if it were N2, which generation? Are we looking at? Yeah, so we're looking at the second generation, or N5 would be the fifth generation, or N10 would be the tenth generation. So now we could easily take a look at a question like, what was the population of simulation four after five generations? All right, so we're looking for the population of simulation four, which means it has to exist somewhere in the simulation four row. So we only care about this row. After how many generations? Four. After five. Yeah, five generations. And so where are we going to look for five generations? Um, when you go to uh, S4, you go across to N5. Yeah, to N5, which is the fifth generation. So where do these two meet? Well, they meet right here, which means for simulation four, after five generations, there's 28 of these. Uh, all right, so what you want to do in your teams right now is you want to take a minute to answer the following questions, one through five. These are questions that are not IOD 401 questions. These are questions that will help you get accustomed to the table so that you'll be able to answer IOD 401 questions later. So if you are watching this at home, you want to pause right now until you answer questions 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And when you answer them all and want to take a look at the answers, just press play. All right, if you are pressing play right now, you are already answered questions 1 through 5 and you're ready to take a look at the answers. So now all of these questions are really just to help you wrap your head around the table itself. This table can be incredibly intimidating if you don't spend a little time with it before you get started. 
if you were to see this passage, say, on a practice ACT and look at it, you might feel overwhelmed right away because there is a lot going on with this table. All right, there's all different subscripts, which are the little numbers below. There's all different superscripts, or uh, I'm sorry, rates, which are like the birth rate and the death rate. And so without really spending some time and getting to know those variables, this could be really hard. But now that you know these, you'll fly through the skill tree. So let's take a quick look at these then. The X variable represents one of the 12 what of this, or in this experiment. Um, simulations. Simulations, perfect. All right, and you can tell that straight from the passage where we got it from before, where it's S is the 12 computer simulations. You'll often see in parentheses the variable, which is listed right after what the variable describes. So in this case, the computer simulations are described by the variable S. All right, N0 represents the population what before the experiment what? Initial size. Before the experiment started. Okay. Before the experiment starts. Perfect. All right. And N zero is described just like the other one we could find. The symbol N zero indicates the population's initial size. All right. And we just needed to remember that the word initial means before it starts. All right. Just to get inside. What about the variable B? The variable B represents the what of the population. Birth rate. The birth rate. Perfect. And again, this is another case where just having the variable in parentheses right after it describes. All right, so it says the birth rate, and then the little b in the parentheses after it tells you the birth rate. All right, what about the next one? The variable blank represents the death rate. Actually, b represents the death rate. And last but not least, each n variable has a subscript, a little letter, or number in this case, next to it. The subscript stands for the blank the experiment is currently at. Perfect. It's the number of generations. Okay. With this knowledge, you are now able to answer questions about this crazy table. So you're going to practice this one on your own. All right. Or in pairs if you're working together, or in teams if you're working with a large group and you happen to be watching this video in order to earn extra credit by working together. What you want to do right now in your team, or individual if you're by yourself, is answer questions 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. All right, together in your team, to answer those questions. Um, you should pause right now and press play when you are ready to check your answer. All right, if you are pressing play on this video now, you are ready to go through questions 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Let's get started with question 6. According to table 1, how many generations would the data in the N15 column have been reproducing for? That's terrible grammar. But what's the answer to this question? 11 generations. How'd you get 11 generations? Okay, so. Oh, okay, so why is that simulation to us? Yep. Um, you go down and press the simulation. Oh, now how come you stopped that? How come you went that way? Um, um, we stopped at 11 because we went to the, where it says generation and 15, and then we looked all the way down through the whole column and one of the, the gener and simulation 10, it had a zero, so we didn't count it out. Oh, I get what you're doing. So you know what? This question is so much easier than you guys even made it. All right? If we remember back to this one right here, um, read number five. Each end variable has a subscript, a little letter next to it. This subscript stands for the generation the experiment is currently at. So if we take a look at a question like this, where it's asking us, according to table one, how many generations was the data in the N15 column reproducing for? There's actually a really simple answer to this question. Because um, remember, our subscript is our generation. So how many generations is it? Oh, okay. Uh, N15 on table, well, it stopped to do it says zero on simulation 10, so it didn't count 10. It's just going to be 
12. Even closer. You guys are making it so much more tricky than you need to. If you take a look at this table, remember what it's showing you is that all these generations are reproducing. So here's after two generations of reproducing, and you know it's after two generations because there's two. This one right here is after five generations. This one is after 10 generations. So, how many generations would N15 have been reproducing for? Yeah, 15. So, the answer here is just 15 generations. We don't even have to worry about simulations because it doesn't ask us anywhere for simulations. It's just how many generations would it have been reproducing? All right. Based on the data in Table 1, what was the death rate of Simulation 3? 0.6. Excellent. 0 0.6. Now, what are the units here? So it is a death rate, but what if we go back to the past? And we take a look at the death rate of the population, and then it gives you the units in parentheses. That's our variable, right? C. And then keep reading. Right. So in this case, if we saw 0 0.6, it would be 0 0.6 is what? How many what? Individuals that do what? Good. that die per nice. All right, so essentially it's 0 0.6 deaths per 1,000. Nice. Number eight, according to table one, which simulation has the highest birth rates? Simulation four and eight. Now how did you get that? Um, by looking at the by looking at the birth rate, and then I just compared which was the highest. Which is the highest was 1.0, which is from simulation 4 and 8. Excellent. So if you compare all these numbers to one another, you see the highest is 1.0. In this case, there's two of them. It happens in both simulation 4 and simulation 3. What if we take a look at question 9 according to table 1? Which simulation or simulations? Ended with 18,316 organisms. So, what you would have to do is go to generation 20, which is N20, go all the way down until you see 18,316, which was for simulation 8, simulation 11. Perfect. We know it ended at generation 20. Where did they end at 18,316? Well, right here and right here. So, that would be generation. 8 and 11. Okay, based on the data in Table 1, how many generations did it take for Simulation 9 to drop to 553 organisms? 15 generations. How So you trace it up and you find that it's at N15, which means how many generations were it? 15 generations. And last but certainly not least, according to Table 1, for how many generations did such simulation 6 stay at a constant population? Now this could be the trickiest question on here. Because on the APT, 5 was an option. But 5 isn't the right answer. 20 generations is actually the right answer. But how is that possible? It looks like it stays at zero for, it stays at eight for one generation, two generations, three generations, four generations, five generations. So why is it not five generations? Because it says how many generations. Excellent. So where do you look for the actual data? You don't count the boxes. Where do you look? Good, and where does it stop being 8? 
And then point. Perfect. That's for the 20th generation. All right, at this point, if you feel like you are understanding these questions, you can move on to the last two multiple choice questions. If not, you should go back and rewatch some of these questions to make sure you get them all before you move on. You should uh, be pausing at this point and rewinding or answering questions seven and nine. Once you're done with questions seven and nine, press play or their activity. All right, you should only be pressing play now if you are ready to go with these uh, with these last two questions, question seven and question nine. If you haven't had a chance to answer them yet, you still have a chance to press pause before I give you the answer. All right, let's take a look at question seven. According to this table, the population size increased most rapidly for which of the following simulations? What do you think the answer is? Um, I'd say answer choice B. How did you get B? Because if you go to it, it jumps in generation 2, 22, generation 5, 97, generation 10, 1,187, 15, 14,464, 20, 176,211. Excellent. Now, the fastest way to do a question like this to see which one grows the most, look at which one ends the highest and see if it still makes sense that that would have grown the most. So it's got to end the highest and start the lowest. You'll notice that this one starts at the lowest number, 8. But it ends at the highest number, 1,007 or 176,211. Now there's another one that grows equally as fast. Which one is that? That would be simulation two. Excellent. But you'll notice simulation two is not an option. Right. Okay. Let's jump on to the last one. In which of the following simulations were deaths more frequent than births? All right. Now going in. Yeah. Go ahead. Um. For nine, um, simulation ten. B. Answer choice B. You said D, simulation 10. Now, my question for you is, how come you wouldn't pick simulation 1? If you look at it, 0 0.25 and 0 0.5, isn't 25 greater than 5? Yes, it is. But the question asks more frequent. And if you go to 10, to S10, it says 0 0.1 birth rate, and then it says 1.1 death rate. And that's a lot more frequent. The 0 0.5 to 0 0.25. And the other thing you have to be careful on in this kind of question, if you were looking at 1 and thinking that 25 is bigger than 5, you'd be right. But remember, 0 0.25 is smaller than 0 0.5. Because remember, you have to add in that second 0. So that 25 is actually smaller than 50. All right, the reason, so we can immediately cross out simulation 1 because 0 0.25 is smaller than 0 0.50. All right, if you are, have completed all of these questions and you feel like you understand how to get them, it's time to go and take the quiz. Good luck.